have you ever had a video game genre that, no matter how often you play it, you just can't seem to get tired of it? With the history of this channel, I think a lot of people expect me to say beat-em-ups or character action games as my go-to answer. To which, you're not wrong, but there's another genre that has had my attention for a much longer period of time than those two being fighting games. I've been playing fighting games since I was capable of holding a controller in my hands, with the first game I'd ever beat being Marvel vs. Capcom. For my younger self's literal baby hands, this was no small feat, as the motion inputs used to hurt my fingers. In fact, beating Marvel vs. Capcom is also how I got my first blisters. But in the end, the pain was worth it, as in beating the game, I felt a sense of accomplishment I never felt before, which got me to stick around the genre a lot longer than I expected. From that point forward, I basically hung around fighting games, as it was consistently the one genre I played no matter where I went. Whether it be at a friend's place, had family over, visited a local laundromat or batting cage, or was just by myself looking to burn some time, a fighting game was always present, leading me to lean on Old Reliable. Now, I may have played fighting games for most of my life, however, none of the fighting games I played ever sparked that interest to look deeper than the surface, let alone seek out actual tournament footage to see different competitors doing cool stuff with the game. For the most part, I was fine not knowing which way was up and which way was down, since it kept me more or less even with everyone else. And then, one day, without any warning, everything changed. In 2016, during the infamously famous Steam holiday sale, I would find myself looking around for a game to purchase. Nothing in particular, just something to waste money on. And somehow, I stumbled upon Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend, a 2D anime fighting game. I thought, eh, why not, seeing as Steam had added a refund feature earlier that year so that if the game was bad, I can always return it so long as I didn't play over two hours. I would then spend the whole night playing the game non-stop, taking away any possibility of me getting that refund. Cpex felt very different from the fighting games I'd normally play, as it felt fast and fluid, not to mention looked really good to boot. I just wanted to play more of it, and play more I did, as Cpex quickly became the only game I would play on Steam for months on end. However, while Cpex got my attention, I still wouldn't dive deeper into fighting games until the release of Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Now, Central Fiction is easily my favorite fighting game ever created. I spent the most time playing it, the most time labbing it, and the most time watching tournaments of it. I've always wanted to talk about this game, but I've been waiting for just the right moment to do so. However, thanks to Arc System Works trying to become the kings of the fighting game scene, the time has finally come, as Central Fiction has, technically had, finally implemented rollback netcode into its online, making it available to a greater group of people who want to play it. And since since the update, I am over the moon, as one of my favorite fighting games of all time just got 10 times better literally out of nowhere after a 5 year drought in content. So, with that being said, why is Central Fiction one of my favorite games ever, and why is the rollback patch enough to motivate me to make a video like this? Well, strap right in, cause we're diving right into Blaze Blue Central Fiction. So, before this video actually begins, let's get a few things out of the way. Central Fiction is the fourth and final entry into the Blaze Blue series story-wise, in which every game, barring cross-tech battle, is super important to understand what happens next. Now, while Central Fiction does have an extensive library ready to fill you in on what happened in the past games, it is a very long read, and honestly doesn't do the actual story justice in terms of storytelling, emotions, and so on. Thankfully, the other games are very cheap when they go on sale, averaging at around $2 to $5 per title, so it isn't hard to experience a story. But with that being said, I don't think those games hold a candle gameplay-wise to Central Fiction. Now, I would do a whole story summary thing, but trust me, the series has a lot going on to the point where saying a single word would have me divulging in entirely new paragraphs just to explain what that one word means. But to give people who might not know the story something to latch on to, Blaze Blue follows Ragna on his revenge quest against Yuki Terumi, who when Ragna was a child, burned down the church he was staying in, took his right arm, turned his little brother crazy, and kidnapped his sister. Sister. But thanks to the help of Rachel and Jubei, Ragna is able to gain a prosthetic arm, aka Blaze Blue, an amorphous weapon which, to put it simply, makes Ragna 10 times stronger and unintentionally dangerous. Now armed with Blaze Blue, Ragna goes on his quest to stop Terami and his plans to start the apocalypse. Now, as a game, Blaze Blue is a 4 button fighting game with all your buttons being labeled A through D, with the lower the letter is on the 
the alphabet indicating how slow and strong the move is. For instance, the A button functions as a light attack, the B button is the medium, the C button is your heavy, and the D button is something special we'll talk about later. Now, in addition to the easily labeled buttons, Blaze Blue includes what's called revolver actions, which allows you to easily cancel your A through D buttons in alphabetical order with little to no difficulty. Revolver Actions is something that I never realized how much it helped me get into Blaze Blue until recently, where Street Fighter V and the King of Fighters XV had a demo and open beta for their games, in which I found out doing combos in a traditional fighting game is pretty difficult, as the input buffer for connecting normals into special moves is a little strict, at least in comparison to what it is in Blaze Blue. It may not have been impossible for me to perform combos, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little bit frustrated trying to get the simple combos to connect. Now, with that being said, Revolver Actions isn't applicable to all characters, as Azrael and Hakumen follow the link system from old school fighting games. However, I find their links to be far more lenient than those of their brethren, but if you are uncomfortable with Blaze Blue's intended system, the game includes Stylish Mode, which not only gives you access to auto combos by mashing buttons, but has you auto guard any incoming attacks, which is pretty ridiculous if you ask me, but hey, if you're having difficulty performing combos, it's there for you to use. Now, Azrael and Hakumen aren't the only oddballs in the game. In fact, Blaze Blue's entire roster of 36 characters are all weirdos with extremely unique abilities for a fighting game. This is for the most part handled through the D button, aka the drive button, which is a completely unique button per character. While some characters' drive buttons are their slowest and hardest hitting attacks, for others it can be a counter, a stance, a zoning tool which doubles as a movement tool, or an environmental ability like controlling the wind. There are no limitations on what a drive can be or what it can do for a character, leading the whole roster to feel extremely unique from one to the other, to the point where every character feels like they're from a different game. This was the greatest Thing about learning how to play Blaze Blue for the first time, as every character was a brand new experience with new goals and weird tools to achieve victory. What's even better is that in a game of 36 weird characters, Central Fiction is decently balanced, having just about every character be within each other's range in terms of power. Now, don't be mistaken, this game has high tier characters and it has low tier characters, and you can identify them the second you push their buttons. However, don't let that discourage you from choosing whoever you want, because despite the disparity, it's extremely possible to beat the high tier characters. I've seen good Taker players cook good 9 players, and I've seen Kagura players do the impossible and manhandle Izanami. Just because a character is better on paper, and in practice, that doesn't mean that you can't learn aspects about how that character fights to lessen the pain when you go up against them. And thankfully, Central Fiction also has a couple more mechanics to help you out. You got stuff like Barrier, a... well barrier that pushes the opponent back farther than normal when you block one of their attacks and also allows you to block in the air. Now, as you'll see underneath your health bar, barrier has its own separate gauge, to which when it drains completely, it'll put you into danger state, where in addition to being unable to block in the air, you will take 20% more damage on top of that. It should be noted that this isn't the only way to enter danger state, as by spending a majority of the match backing away from the opponent, the game will penalize you by automatically forcing it on your character. With that being said, don't feel like you need to constantly get in in every waking moment, as not only does the game give you a warning when you're about to hit danger state, but so long as you take any offensive option, it's really rare to get, as it mostly exists as a way to distance that device turtling. Most of the other mechanics in Central Fiction will make use of the heat gauge, aka the super meter, sitting at the bottom of the screen. The first of these mechanics being Crush Sugar, which is a guard break move that can only be stopped by barrier requiring 25 meter, Rapid Cancel, an ability where if you have half of your super meter, you can cancel any attack including supers to create powerful mix-ups, extend combos, make an unsafe move safe, or just to be used to get back in. Counter Assault, a get off me move that also requires half of your super meter, but can only be used on block to do a harmless attack that stops your opponent's momentum, First, another get off me move that you can only activate on hit that sends the opponent flying full screen when successfully connected, and Overdrive, a for lack of a better term comeback mechanic that not only overtunes your character's drive to give them combos they normally couldn't access, but prevents your opponent from using burst, freezes the timer, and gives you access to more powerful supers. The time you spend in Overdrive is all dependent on the amount of health you have when you activate Overdrive, at which the lower the amount of health you have, the more time you have in Overdrive. However, if you activate Overdrive while doing a combo or in block stun, then the time you have in overdrive will be halved in comparison to activating it raw, which is used to balance overdrive because a character's damage potential skyrockets significantly, especially so if they have 100 meter to burn. The caveat to overdrive's strength is that it's tied to burst, and that if you use one, you can't use either for a set period of 
time. It should also be noted that if you use overdrive instead of burst, you'll recover the burst gauge much more quickly than if you use burst, so keep that in mind. And while I'm at it, if you hold down all four face buttons while in overdrive, you'll perform an exceed assault, which is an invincible attack that sends you right into active flow, a state that not only gives you a 10% damage increase, but also speeds up the burst gauge's refill time. It should also be noted that Blaze Blue has a unique tech system that allows you to choose how you recover when you get knocked down depending on what direction you hold alongside what button you press to recover. What teching is in a fighting game sense is a basic recovery. As short and to the point, not every combo your opponent will do to you will be a true combo, indicated by the combo counter turning blue, along with a number appearing underneath the combo counter which will tell you where the combo actually dropped. Now, you tech out of a combo by simply holding a button the second you get hit, and if at any point the combo drops, your character will automatically recover and your opponent's attack will whiff. Now, while it's all well and good to immediately tech out of an untrue combo, if a character ends up doing their combo ender, it's actually not a very good idea to keep holding down tech, as if you continue to hold down a button, your character will immediately tech in place, which makes it all the more easier for your opponent to hit you with a mix-up. Now, to help you out, Blaze Blue has four different unique tech options for when you get knocked down that can only be accessed if you're not immediately holding tech. These options are Quick Get Up, Delay Get Up, Forward Roll, and Back Roll. Each one of these grants you a variable amount of invincibility when you wake up depending on the option, or no invincibility at all in the case of Quick Get Up. Forward Roll and Back Roll are pretty self-explanatory, being used to roll away or towards your opponent to get away from them or to trip them up. While Back Roll is almost always safe except for when you're in the corner, Forward Roll is much riskier, as if your opponent sees it coming, they can stick out a button and interrupt it and pick you up for a brand new combo. But with that being said, don't be deterred from using it, because your opponent won't always be trying to to catch you, at least on purpose anyways. Next is Delay Wake Up, which has the most invincibility and is mainly used to mitigate any kind of mix-up your opponent tries to do to you on Wake Up, and in fact, it can be used to turn the tables on your opponents if they commit too hard to send mix-up. Now, while delaying your Wake Up is great, you don't want to delay it for too long, as if your opponent catches on, they can pick you up again for a brand new combo. And finally, you have Quick Get Up, which as I mentioned before, has no invincibility, but you can act out of it as soon as possible. In addition, it doesn't have the white flash around it like the other wake up options which clues the opponent in to know that they should pressure now, and without it, it's a lot easier for them to get caught off guard by it. Quick get up is an option you use when you fight a player for a long period of time, as you'll need to mix in all the other options for it not to get blown up immediately. Proper uses of these mechanics can swing the tide of the game in your favor, but just as it's a tool that you can use, your opponent can and will more than likely use them as well. So even though it's extremely possible, don't expect that win to come easy. I speak from experience when I say this because it took months before I could start winning consistently despite how strong central fiction systems were. Part of the reason was that the people playing had already built up legacy skill or familiarity in layman's terms with how the game worked and were more comfortable with the game than I was. And the other part was because back then, I couldn't stick with one character. Remember earlier when I said that the best part about Blaze Blue was the fact that each character felt so unique from one to the other? Well, as it turns out, that was a double-edged sword that had me spinning my wheels for months. I've had stints where I played Azrael, Naoto, Hazuma, and many more characters, and while I could play all of them, playing them well was an entirely different story. To be good at playing a character it takes a lot of dedication and practice, learning what works where, and figuring out what your character can do in relation to what your opponent is doing. And after about 20 to 30 hours of getting nowhere, I finally decided to buckle down and just stick with a character. One who would not only teach me how to play fighting games, but teach me how to play Blaze Blue in general. And so, I went with the obvious choice. Ragna the Blood Edge. Being the main character, Ragna of course is an easy to pick up and play character with fairly easy to execute combos. His whole game plan revolves around him getting in your face, making you fear getting counter hit by him, then when he's convinced that you're not going to push a button, either grab you or hit you with an overhead. Ragna is by no means a mix up character, but he can get by thanks to his two overheads and three lows, giving the opponent a bit to look out for. But where Ragna really shines is in the mid range, with his B and C buns having amazing range, although ironically his range is 
is also his greatest weakness. Since he lacks a projectile worth any salt, if a character can fight him at full screen or outranges his 5B and C buttons in general, it can be a real pain to fight. Thankfully, Ragna also has some sticky pressure, as even with Barrier, he's extremely difficult to get rid of, requiring that you make an educated guess to escape. Now, as for Ragna's drive, it allows him to take the damage he dealt to the opponent and add it onto his own life. While it sounds strong, outside of Overdrive, it isn't really amazing, as it only heals you for bits and pieces to keep things fair. Though, I will admit, in late game situations, his drive has more utility to prevent chip damage or a stray projectile from doing you in. It also allows you to get the dreaded Ragna perfect, where your opponent managed to deal a little bit of damage to you, but then Ragna's drive managed to heal that damage, so any evidence of them getting a chance to play is gone. Ragna, even to this day, is undoubtedly my best character, which I find pretty funny because back in the day, I didn't want to play him, as I thought getting good with an easy character would have said something about my skill in comparison to playing a hard character. In the end, I'm glad I gave Ragna a shot because now he fits my hand like a glove, and honestly, if it weren't for him, I don't know if I would have stuck around Central Fiction any longer. But that being said, I can be a little hard-headed at times, and as a result, I don't just want to get good with one character, I want to get good with two, or rather, as many as I can. So, I ended up picking up another character along the way. Kagura Mutsuki. Kagura is Blaze Blue's only charge character, meaning that instead of the motion inputs you normally see in command menus, Kagura only needs to hold back or down, then hit the opposite direction in the corresponding button. Because of this, Kagura sports a very powerful reversal, a strong anti-air, and a very good fireball that gains power as it travels. On top of that, Kagura's got some insane damage output, getting around 3,000 for a simple 3-hit combo, while other characters would barely be able to break 1,000 with that. Now, as for his drive, Kagura can enter one of three stances that change what his A through C buttons do, giving him unique properties per stance like armor frames, projectile guard point, and foot invincibility. However, not only are Kagura's drive attacks easily interruptible, but because they have such good attributes to them, it also leads its pressure game to be a mixed bag. Unlike Ragnar's pressure who is built to be hard to get rid of, Kagura's pressure is actually full of holes, allowing your opponent to interrupt almost everything you do once you reach the C buttons. As such, you're supposed to play a game of rock, paper, scissors with them every time you put them in the blocks using your drive to beat out whatever option they choose to use. But, because each drive carries its own weaknesses, it's going to be a gamble no matter how good a raid you think you have on them. Playing Kagura can feel like the most satisfying thing in the game, as in addition to his high damage and slick looking combos, when you're right, it feels like you got into the opponent's head and can predict everything they're about to do next. But on the opposite side of things, when you're wrong, Boy, does it feel wrong, as in addition to gambling on your own offense, Kagura doesn't really excel at any other range other than right in front of your opponent's face, as his buttons are either too slow or don't have enough reach to contest most of what they want to do. As such, failing to get the hit can have you flailing around the screen, which honestly doesn't really feel that good, at least in comparison to Ragna. But despite his weaknesses, I won't ever drop Kagura. My reasons being is that, first, he's a really cool character, and second, is that I have a bit of sentimental value with him, as he was the first character I ever tried legitimately learning back in Chrono Phantasma, and despite not getting much of anywhere with him, I do want to become good with him here in Central Fiction. Another thing that helps is that his theme, Black Aggression, is amazing, being a swashbuckling pirate sounding tune that with no warning drops right into heavy rock. It is an extremely jarring change, but it's extremely fun to listen to, especially when you're cooking your opponents. And, I mean, it is a cool listen, if the other person decides to play his theme. Oftentimes, they'll just hit random, and I don't really blame them, as Central Fiction has a lot of amazing themes, like Stan Unrival, Black and White, Motorhead 1 specifically, and so many more. So, even if I don't get the theme I'm hoping for, I still got a lot of other amazing themes to fall back on when I play Kagura. I just wish his offense didn't fall apart at the slightest bit of scrutiny. Of course, you don't have to play online, as Central Fiction has tons of good single-player content, in fact, that's where I spent most of my time trying to 
learn how to play characters. Central Fiction has modes like the ever popular arcade mode, which is surprisingly meaty with there being three acts per character, with each one furthering the characters in story, Score Attack, which is like arcade mode but with a number in the upper right corner of the screen, Speed Star, which is Central Fiction's version of a time attack where the better you are at using mechanics, the more time gets added to your overall time until you beat or lose a challenge, and Grim of the Abyss mode, which is Blaze Blue's take on an RPG, putting you into a dungeon where you can deck your desired character out with weird effects like speed buffs, self-healing, and other stuff, and fight a bunch of AI who are also using these insane abilities, effectively turning this mode into Blaze Blue Central Fiction Rainbow Edition. However, this is a fighting game after all, and most of the enjoyment you can get from it comes when you play with another person. And since I don't know anyone around me who plays Blaze Blue, it's gonna have to come online. Which thankfully, as I mentioned earlier, was changed greatly thanks to rollback. To paint a picture of what the online was like beforehand, it ran on shoestring and hope, as not only was it really bad, but you couldn't choose more than three stages to play in a game with over 40 different stages. On top of that, you couldn't skip the intros, otherwise the game would begin lagging as it turns out that the game stabilized its connection during the intro. Apparently the game worked great in Japan, but living in the states where people who are interested in the game are farther apart than you, I felt every bit of the online struggling to hold together. This was how things used to be, and because of how poor the online was, not many people were inclined to play some of the harder characters, leaving the experience to get real samey after a while. With rollback, however, not only can you play all the stages you couldn't before, but you can also connect to a wider range of people up to 200 ping. To give an example of how long this range is, in Guilty Gear Strive, 200 ping would be about west coast of the United States to Europe, at which at 150 ping, the game becomes a lot harder to enjoy as characters start teleporting around. But in Blaze Blue, 200 ping is still very playable. Granted, you're not going to be entering tournaments with this kind of ping because the faster characters just sort of appear in different areas, but if you're looking to have fun with a friend who doesn't live in the same country as you, it's very possible to do so. With that being said, you do need an Ethernet cable to play this kind of online. I know some people's living arrangements may not provide the capability to access one, but if you don't, and you try to get games with someone far away, you risk turning the game into a PowerPoint presentation where it actually becomes unplayable. Now, thankfully, ever since the rollback patch, I really haven't had that many bad connections with people, as I'm able to count the bad games on two hands, whereas I've lost count in the number of times the connection was amazing. The rollback patch makes everything so smooth, it is ridiculous. I'm honestly at awe that this is the same game I've been playing for six years straight. With that being said, I do wish that there was a delay slider on this game like Guilty Gear Plus R has. That way I could play those people who are on 200 pings picking fast characters. It should be noted that there are multiple facets to online, the first and most obvious being ranked. Ranked in Central Fiction is not my favorite, as when you sync up to someone, you only play for a best of one game with them. There is no second match for you to adapt or try to do anything about what they just did. As such, it's not something I go to unless I don't feel like using the other options. Next is player matches where a majority of people will congregate to, and in them there are two variations, being match and spectate and free for all. Of the two, free for all is where I go to the most, as in match and spectate, you either plow through a room of seven people, or you wait for seven people to finish their turns in order for you to play. Most of the time when I play Central Fiction, I want to play now, and unless I'm in a call with friends, I don't really have the patience for match and spectate. There are also online lobbies, which aren't as populated, but can be used to get gamed if you don't feel like creating a room. Do note that there is no regional restrictions when a person joins an online lobby, so use at your own risk. The lobbies are also where these gotcha of vending machines are located, where you can spend in-game currency on items to decorate your player room. Funnily enough, my room was bare for the longest time before making this video, where I decided to show it off, and I found this stained glass Celica picture, which led me down a rabbit hole to find more Celica merch, for lack of a better term. To make a long story short, this was my first experience with a gacha, and after getting this Celica wall scroll, I fist bumped to myself and realized I had to shut it down right then and there before my money was suddenly levied for my wallet. Still though, I ended up using that wall scroll along with vaguely other Celica related things to decorate my room. And I also got this picture of Ragna and the dudes in suits, just to throw anyone off in case they think I like Celica. 
How did you know? And that, ladies and gents, was Blaze Blue Central Fiction, my favorite fighting game ever made. I'll be real, with the way fighting games are made nowadays to be easier to those who don't play fighting games, Central Fiction can be a tough sell to anyone who is used to how it is now. But I'll tell you this much, if you stick with it, you'll see just for yourself how interesting and varied this game is. And honestly, now's a really good time to get it. Not only did the rollback update decrease the amount of space you need to install the game from 50 gigs to 16, but it's also pretty cheap when it's on sale. The exact price is variable as thanks to the rollback patch, the sale price got hiked to around $20, obviously to support the work that went into it, but still $20 for a full game with one DLC character is pretty good and honestly a steal for what this game is actually worth. As of writing this, the rollback is only available on Steam, which is sad for the PS4 owners who just can't rock with us, but with that being said, Central Fiction with rollback is amazing, and it's an experience you don't want to miss out on.